Okay, so we're going to be continuing to work inside of our player controller. So if you've got that open, great. If not, uh, you can go ahead and go back into Unity and go to your created scripts folder and double click on this. Um, this is where we're going to be working here. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to create a new method. We are going to be using update, but Unity actually has two built-in update methods. Update is called once per frame, which means it's called every chance that your computer can basically run it. Um, and that means it changes depending on how fast your computer are. There's another update method that we can create by clicking after this closed bracket and hitting enter a couple times. We can type void fixed update with a capital F and a U. Uh, and this is a form of update that runs uh, at 60 frames per second, no matter what. So even if your computer can't keep up with that, it's going to run as though it was running at six. So it will, it will actually skip running um, some code and basically assume that we've moved up to 60. Um, so this is important because Unity's physics engine uh, actually runs at 60 frames per second always. So this is going to be, uh, the, whenever Unity's physics engine updates, this is going to call fixed update. Uh, so inside fixed update, what we wanna say is current velocity is equal to, helps to spell velocity, right? Uh, equal to rigid dot velocity. Uh, and then we're going to say uh, current velocity dot uh, z is equal to move dir dot z times 10. Uh, and we're going to say current velocity dot x is equal to move dir dot x times 10. Uh, and then we're going to give ourselves a little more space and say rigid dot angular velocity is equal to vector three dot zero. And that's basically just the same thing as this. <coughs> Excuse me, it's basically the same thing as this, but shorthand. So we're, we're just giving them a value of three zeros. We also want to say rigid dot inertia tensor rotation, which I know is a mouthful and a very long Thing, but that basically is just a a value or a variable that determines our rigid body's uh, rotational inertia, which is the our our rigid body wants to rotate, and we want to make it not do that because we don't want it to rotate unless we're telling it to. And we're going to set that equal to quaternion, another mouthful I know. Dot Euler vector three. Dot zero. And again, that's inside those parentheses because quaternion.euler is a method, just like fixed update or get component. Uh, and then finally, you want to say rigid.velocity is equal to current velocity. And that means we're going to get this movedir value. And you might be thinking, well, where does movedir come from? And that's that's what we're doing next. So what we're going to say is uh, we're going to step below fixed update there. And we're going to say void process input with a capital P and I and our open and close parentheses and brackets. And then we're going to say move dir dot Z equals input dot get access and quote unquote vertical. And if I can step outside that and hit the semicolon and then again move dir dot X this time not Z but X. We're going to say input dot get access horizontal and that input.getAccess is another built-in Unity method that's going to allow us to uh, get the values of our W and S key for vertical and A and D for horizontal, which corresponds to moving forward and back. W moves forward, S moves back, and A moves left and D moves right. So that's going to handle determining our direction. We're then going to say if movedir.magnitude, so that is if we have a value in movedir, we are holding a button, and when that value will be greater than zero. So if that's true, we're going to say movedir is equal equal to transform dot transform direction move dir. And what this is going to do is our move directions are always going to be 
from the get access value going to be either one, zero, or negative one. Um, and while we can control that and we understand that, um, that's not going to correspond to actual directions in our game. So, you know, you could be facing, if you're facing straight forward, then holding W and that being one would be perfect. But if we're turned slightly, then holding one would make us go to the side. So what this line does is transform that direction to correspond to the rotation of our player. We can now step outside of those brackets and say else and open and close brackets again. We say move dir equals vector 3.0. So if we don't have a magnitude of zero, we want to make sure that that move dir stays zero. Uh, we can step outside of those brackets again. Um, and actually, I think we can, we might be able to leave it there. Let me, let's see here. Uh, no, we're going to do one more thing, actually. Uh, so we need to add one more method. We're going to step outside of process inputs by, again, clicking the, the close bracket here and adding some space. And we're going to add a void try jump. So that's going to be void try jump. And then open and close parentheses and brackets. And this one we're going to say if physics.raycast and then open and close parentheses inside our open and close parentheses. So sometimes things get a little bit uh, nested as we call it. We're going to say transform dot position comma vector three dot down comma call dot height over two plus point one F comma LM capital LM. And that's that variable we declared earlier. And we're going to step outside of both parentheses to add our brackets. And we're going to say rigid dot add force zero comma jump force comma zero and our parentheses. So uh, what's happening here is this physics dot raycast is a built in method that shoots what is essentially a laser beam or a line in one direction. So it starts at our player's position and it shoots straight down thanks to vector three dot down and it shoots at a distance that's equal to half of our collider's height, which means that it's shooting from Transform dot position is the center of our collider. Uh, so by shooting that height over two, we're shooting down equivalent to half of our height, which means our feet would, where our feet would be touching the ground. That's exactly where we're landing. But we add this point one here because we want to overshoot that by just a little bit uh, so that we don't uh, have to worry about. Uh, we can account for the fact that if we're you know laying directly on the ground, then um, the, the ray might not actually reach all the way. So with that, adding that little bit, just make sure that our ray is going to actually touch the ground. Uh, then we can go back up into process inputs. And we're going to say if input dot get key down key code dot space. And then inside its brackets, we'll say try jump. And then open close parentheses and the semicolon. So now, uh, if ever we hit the input dot get key down space, that means if we ever hit the space key, we're going to call this try jump method, and that's going to try to let us jump. Um, one more thing we need to do is go back into update and say process input, and then open and close parentheses and our uh, semicolon there, and then we can save. And I think we can go back into our Unity uh, editor here. Let me make sure. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and go back into our Unity editor. But we do need to add one thing before we can hit play and, and test out our movement. Uh, what we need to do is click into our player, make sure we're in our scene view in the top left, and use that right click to fly around. We wanna, uh, we're gonna create that grapple point, that grapple fire point transform here. We're going to create that. Uh, so what we want to do is right click on player and hit create empty. And I believe we're going to make this a, yeah, we're going to make this a child of player, which it is already. We're going to rename this to grapple holder. And you can do that by, uh, I think if you double click on the text, it'll work. You can right click the game object, or you can just do it in the inspector field up here where it just said game object and it updated to grapple holder. Um, that grapple holder is where we're going to fire our grappling hook from. Um, but we need to add one component to this, uh, and that's going to be a line renderer. So we're going to hit add component. Oop, we don't want to hit new script. We want to hit the, the search bar at the top here. Type line renderer. 
There we go, that's going to create a line renderer for us. And then the last thing we need to do is in our project folder, there's this materials panel. We're going to right click inside this, go to create, and find the object that says material. Not physics material, it's a different thing. We want just material. We're going to name this grapple mat. And then there's this little, in the top right of the inspector, there's this little white box here next to albedo. If you click on that, you can make this color whatever you want. Uh, you can choose what color is selected by using this wheel and moving the white circle. And then this inside square, there's another black circle where you can select the tone. So you can either go all the way down to get black, all the way to the top left to get white, or the top right to get the pure color. Uh, I like the color blue, so I'm going to choose a nice light blue. There we go. Perfect. We're going to click back on our grapple holder now and drag grapple mat into this materials, uh, this materials uh, element zero field. So you might have to click the drop down arrow next to materials, but we're going to drop it into element zero. Um, we also want to make sure we open positions and just make sure that this has two positions selected. It'll probably start with 000 and 001. That's fine. We can leave that as it is, but just make sure we have two positions there. Um, once we have all of that, we can save our scene by doing the control S or again going to file and hitting save. We're going to hit play and we'll find if we press W, we walk forward. If we press S, we walk back. A goes left, D goes right and space jumps uh, but for some reason it's not and i think i know exactly why so we've assigned all those values but we forgot to do one there's this uh, oh we, we also forgot to assign our grapple fire point so let's drag grapple holder into grapple fire point and then this part that says lm where it says nothing we actually want to click on that and set it to default uh, and what that means is now that that layer mask that checks if we can jump is going to uh, see if it can make contact with the ground, which is on the default layer. And now with that set, if I hit space, you see we jump. And I think that jump force is a little low, so I would recommend cranking that up to like 500. That's probably a bit more reasonable. You guys are actually welcome to play around, well, that's maybe a little much actually. I think I'm gonna drop mine down to like 250. Uh, but you guys are welcome to change these values as we use them. I wouldn't recommend changing grapple until you get done with the grapple code, but like things like jump force we can change. Um, these things are, are totally up to being customized, but keep in mind, that they have to be the same as I write them here in the code. So don't change the values here. If you want to tweak stuff, you can change it on the player controller. Because um, again, that's going to throw off the check setup button and we want to avoid that at all costs. Um, so yeah, once you've got all of this, um, I know it was a lot for this step, but um, they, they, they get a little bit easier, believe me, uh, as we go on. Um, the next step we're going to do is, is get our control or our camera working so that we can turn and then eventually we'll get into the grapple and stuff. Um, so yeah, make sure to save your scene and you can go ahead and move on.